So we want to talk about translational equilibrium. Uh, tomorrow we'll talk about rotational equilibrium, which is a different sec uh, situation. For a body to be in what's called translational equilibrium, the following condition must be true. Uh, don't write this down. I'm going to type, I think, Mr. Duick. Don't write this down. The sum of all the forces must equal zero. There's a shorter way to write that. But that's what the definition of translational equilibrium is. All the forces cancel out. Now, if the sum of all the forces is zero, by the way, what's the acceleration exactly as a number? Okay, that's okay. So we have an abbreviate Kate, for the sum of. It's that fancy schmancy little sigma symbol of all the forces has to equal zero. Now, that's the proper sigma. I'm really sloppy and lazy. Most of my sigmas just look like a capital M on its side, and that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of it. If you know or if you notice that the sum of all the forces is zero, we say it's in translational equilibrium. There's another way to write this as well. You can write this as the sum of all the vertical forces has to be zero, and the sum of all the horizontal forces has to be zero. That's what you would use if you were going with components. In fact, you can even take it one step further than that. Really, the sum of all the vertical forces equals zero. That means all of the forces up have to equal all of the forces in which direction? Down. And if the horizontal forces are zero, what that really means is the sum of all the forces to the left have to equal, yeah. There are two main types of questions in, these, in this area, Fahim. Questions with ropes and questions with long beams, with long planks, with long pieces of wood. So we're going to start off with a question with a rope. This is a classic equilibrium question. A sign hanging from two cables. And it says, find the tension in each rope if M1 is 12.6 and theta is 34. I'm going to put the 34 degrees right there. And I guess it's also right there. First thing, Nicole, notice this is symmetrical. What that does mean, because it's symmetrical, 34 degrees a piece, each tension is going to be identical. The ropes are splitting the tension. Okay. How are we going to do that? You know what, Ashley, this is a good job for us. We're going to use a free body diagram, but it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to draw the free body diagram where the ropes all connect, not on the mass, but where the ropes all connect. I'm going to start out by saying, get the obvious one, Ashley. Yep. What else? Two ropes. What do they call? What do we call the force in a rope? Yeah, and because there's two ropes, I'm going to call this one here tension on the left rope, and I'm going to call this one here tension on the right rope. You could also call them tension one and tension two. Now, in this case, Petra, because the angles are identical, tension left and tension right are going to be the same. So when it says find the tension in each rope, I'm just going to find one of them. I found both of them. Uh, if you compare that with here, though, here the tensions won't be the same because it's not symmetrical. We'll take that one step further. You can do this with components. Don't write this down. First of all, is there an angle? Did I say angle? You could go components. What you could do is you could say, okay, this is made up of, uh, don't write this down, a horizontal tension and a vertical tension another horizontal tension, and another vertical tension. And the horizontal tensions cancel out. And tension Y uh, plus tension Y equals mg. And that could be your equation where you could start to solve this. You could find an expression for tension Y in terms of the actual tension and get the tension by itself. Not a fan. And I'm not a fan because most of you have learned something called the sine law. You're doing it right now, or you did it in pre-calc last semester. Really useful tool here. We're going to draw a vector triangle, but there's going to be three vectors. 
because there's three different forces. And here's the key. If I told you that my displacement was zero and I walked this way and then that way, if my displacement is zero, which direction does the third vector have to point so that I have a zero displacement? Okay, if those are displacements, that's a displacement of zero. Well, you know what? If those are forces, that's also a net force of zero. That's a picture of translational equilibrium. That's what we're going to draw. We're going to draw a three-vector triangle that goes back to where it starts from, that ends up pointing back where it came from. We always draw the easiest vector first. Ella, out of these three vectors, which one looks the easiest to draw? I'll give you a hint. It's obvious. Yeah. Everybody draw MG first. I'll label it in a second, but Ashley, what do you want to draw next? Tension left or tension right? I don't care. Pick. Okay, so I'm going to go this way. Yoink. I'm going to put the MG on this side then so it doesn't end up inside my triangle. And I'll label this uh, tension left. Tension right is going to go back to where it starts. Whoop. It's going to go back. Whoop. Come on. Oh, the pen just magically stopped working there suddenly. I don't know why it does that. Hey, we're back. Tension right is going to go there. Is this a right-angled triangle? Okay. So then what I found useful was to add horizontal dotted lines. I'm going to go like this, D, 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 and D, 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 D. Because I notice tension right, when it hits a horizontal line, Ashley, how big is that angle right there? This angle right here is 34 degrees. I don't want that. I want this angle. Well, what do both of those angles add to? 90. So on your calculator or in your head, 90 minus 34. If you want to, you can put the 34 in there so you know what the heck we did. Uh, 56, 60, 50, 56. Yes? No? <clears throat> I can do a similar argument here. Tension left, when it hits a horizontal line, forms a 34-degree angle, which means this angle here is 56 degrees. If I know two angles, I know three angles, because what does every triangle add to? 180. So can you find the third angle, please, uh, this one right here? 8 and what? 68, is that correct? Okay. We can't solve this with Sokotoa. It's not a right angle triangle. We can solve this with the sine law. How do I know at a glance I can use the sine law when I have a pair? If I know an angle and the side across from it, I know the 68 and MG. I know M. I know G. I, can, I know MG. This is how I'm going to start. Ashley, what do you want to find first? Tension left or tension right? I don't care. Pick. So it's going to look like this as an equation. The sine of the angle that I know divided by the side that I know, that's going to equal, you said, uh, tension left. Which angle goes with tension left? The top right angle, sine 56. There's the sine law writ large. How would I get the tension left by itself? You know what? This is one fraction equals one fraction. Stuff moves diagonally or cross multiply or whatever you want to call it. I think the tension left is going to end up here. I think the mg is going to end up in front of the sine 56 and the sine 68 is going to end up on the bottom. If you want to, you can go straight to numbers on your calculator. Arian, let me know what you get. By the way, when I see you sitting like this, not writing anything down and just kind of daydreaming, you can rest assured I'm coming at you to get you back involved. Figure it out. You don't disguise it very well. I have no idea what the answer is, by the way. So, Probably, 
little less than 120? Or is it more than 120? No, I think it's less than 120. Ashley, what'd you get? 100, 110 point and stuff? Is that right? Is it 110? Yeah. Um, and because this is symmetrical, I can also say tension right equals 110 newtons. All we're going to do now is just kick things up a notch. But you shouldn't be learning anything new today. In fact, even technically, none of that should have been new. I've done adding vectors tip to tail before. We've talked about uh, how you can draw a three vector triangle. And OK, sign law, you're technically supposed to have done that in Math 10. With COVID, I don't know. You're technically also supposed to have done it near the end of Math 11. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure all of you saw it in pre-calc this year. I'm pretty sure. Let's do a tougher one. Here, it's not symmetrical. Uh, which way has the mass shifted, to the left or to the right? To the left? Which rope is supporting more, the left rope or the right rope? The left rope. Tension on the left is going to be a little bit larger. It wants me to find the tension in each rope. Once again, Jaya, this is a job for us. And I'm going to draw the free body diagram on the junction. It's going to be M1G, tension left, tension right. If I'm drawing this as a vector, again, I could do this with components, but it'd be a little more work than just straight sine law, cosine law. Uh, if I was drawing this uh, as a vector triangle, I draw the easiest vector first, which in this case is I'm going to just for giggles do the right one next because we did the left one next last time. So the right one looks like it goes off a little shallower. So I'm going to kind of eyeball it. There's tension right. There's MG. And I guess tension left goes scooching up like that. My scale might be a bit off, but I'll, I'll not panic about that. What angle can I put? Color, color, color. Right there. You know what? Let's label what they gave us. They told us theta was 44 degrees, and they told us alpha was 16 degrees. So it looks like tension right when it hits a horizontal line forms an angle how big, Jaya? So I'm pretty sure this angle right here is 16 degrees. How big is this angle right here? 74? Let me pause. And then it looks like if I add another horizontal line, dee, 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 how big is this angle? Well, apparently it's 44 degrees. I don't want that. I want this angle, 90 minus 44, 46. And I need the third angle because that's going to be my pair for the sine law. Uh, whatever, 180 minus 46 minus 74. Oh, this should work out even. Uh, 50, 60, 60, 50, 60, 60. By the way, I always do angles on a calculator. The number of times I've forgotten to carry the one when I'm doing the math in my head, I just don't even bother anymore. So I'm going to draw a little line like that. What do you want to find first, left or right? Okay, so the starting point, the pair that I know, is the sine of 60 over mg. And you said you want to find tension, right? Which angle is going to go with tension right. Sine law always goes with the one across from it. That's the sine law, sine 46. Marcus, grab it. That's my equation. The nice thing is once you have this set up, or you got something else to write with? Okay, you can get it later. Uh, the nice thing is once you have this set up, it's I think straight cross multiplying, like it's honestly, it's math eight, it's cross multiplying, it's a little more complicated, but uh, I think it's going to be tension right, moves to the top, it's going to be mg sine 46 over sine 60. It's going to be 12.6 times 9.8 sine 46 divided by sine 
60. Uh, those of you that are in pre-calc this semester, you might have switched your calculators to radians. Make sure you're back to degrees for this. Uh, 102 point, you know what, 103 if I go to three sig figs, yeah? Victor, it's going to be very similar for tension left. We're still going to, st by the way, we could use tension right to find tension left. I'm going to use MG because I know that one's correct. So I'm going to start off with the same pair in my sine law, sine of 60 over MG. I want to find tension left. Which sine, what am I going to go with tension left? Always the one across from it. So the sine law, if you're wondering, it always works in opposite pairs like that. Let me erase that though, because that really gummed up my drawing. So it's going to be the sine of 74. In fact, oh, you know what? I think when I rewrite this, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to be mg. You can just backspace, can you not? And I think on your calculator, uh, just change the 46 to a 74, and you're done, aren't you? It's otherwise the same expression. And I did predict, Eliana, you and I predicted that the left tension would be larger. It is. What did I get? 137 newtons. Usually, so that's uh, looking at it when we have uh, uh, ropes and tensions. Usually when you're finding equilibrium on a beam, here's a beam, a long piece of wood, it's a lot easier. It says, find the force that the tower exerts on the bridge. Eliana, is the bridge sinking into the ground like quicksand? Is it flying here like Superman? Okay, do you see anything at angles? You know what? We can keep it really, really simple. We can say the sum of all the forces up have to equal the sum of all the forces down. Eliana, what are the forces up? There's two of them. What are the forces up? There's two of them. 1,900. And which one? FB. Yes? What are the forces down? Also two of them. Get the FB by itself, minus 1900 from both sides. A little nicer than what we just did. In fact, really, that's physics 11 in my mind. Twenty two sixty. I don't know. Double check. Twenty one sixty. Twenty. It's going to end in a sixty. I got that part. Okay. Am I way off, Eliana? What'd you get? Oh, it's going to be way higher than that. But it's going to end in a sixty. No. Kyle, what'd you get? Four six six zero. I was carrying around. Yeah. That's why I use my calculator for these. Okay. Example four. This is kind of a nice one in that there's nothing new here. This is what I would have, this is one they used to love sticking on the old provincial. It's really a physics A plus level question, but it's all physics 11. Okay. Aiden, what does example four want me to find? Mew. What's Mew? I don't know what's Mew with you. Okay. Any suggestions on how we're going to start? Because look at the picture. I guess we have a mass pulling down. There must be enough friction to keep this from sliding off. Okay. How big a Mew do we need minimum for that to be the case? Any suggestions on how we, want, we might want to start? What might this be a good job for? Yeah. I'm going to start on the 12.3. Because I usually go from left to right, I'm going to get the obvious one. I'm going to call the 12.3 mass 2. What else? Yep. 
I'm going to call it normal force number two just to go with mass number two. What else? What else? Is there more than one rope? Yeah, there is. Is there more than one tension? Yeah, there is. I'm going to go high tech. Since this is the right-hand rope, I'm going to call this tension in the right-hand rope T with a subscripted R. And I think that's it for this mass. What about the forces on the 5.25? Get the obvious one. I'll call that M1G. And then I think we're going to have tension left. What else? Yeah, tension right is Newton's third. Forces come in pairs. Mr. Duick, shouldn't tension left come in pairs? It does. There is a tension left on the wall. Do we care about the wall? So if you're wondering why there isn't a matching pair, it's not really what we're looking at. So who cares? It would just clutter things up. Okay. It does say that we are in equilibrium. In other words, all the forces have to be balanced. Um, can you write me a horizontal force equation for this? Say yes. And what is it going to be? Here's my argument. For this not to be accelerating, friction has to be the same size or cancel out which force? Yes. There's our starting point. Friction has to cancel out tension right. How does that help? I don't know. Well, you know what? Maybe I can find an expression for tension right from this. Here, I have three forces connected with a little dot. You know what? It's going to be similar to this. It's going to be a vector triangle and a sine law. So what's the easiest one to draw? Draw that one first. Mg. And then what I always taught my students, Aiden, was after you've done the easiest one, always do the yuckiest one next. What's the yuckiest force remaining? Tell me when to stop drawing tension left. Oh, I know I have to stop there because look at my picture. Tension right is exactly horizontal to the right. If I went further, then tension right would be slanting up. If I went shorter, tension yeah, it would both tensions would be slanting, and they're not. They're horizontal. In fact, not only that, Aiden, bonus, I think this is going to be Sokotoa, not sine law, cosine law. We do have to get an angle. Color, color, color. There's the 42. So it looks like when the tension runs into a vertical line, what angle is formed? When the tension runs into a vertical line, what angle is formed? Yeah. Okay. What am I hoping to write an expression for? Tension right. So, color, color, color. Tension right, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. What about M1G? Because that's the one that I know. Yeah. I could label tension left. I don't know. Who cares? Uh, uh, which trig function? Tan. Haven't used that for a while. Yeah, you're right. It's going to be tan 42 equals tension right over M1G. Get the tension right by itself. And that can now go up there. I'll have friction equals M1G tan 42. We're not done. They didn't ask me to find the force of friction. What did they ask me to find? Oh, Aryan friction is what times what? So I think I would go mu times the normal force equals M1G tan 42. How can I get the mu by itself? Divide what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I don't know the force the same size as the normal force. Which force is the same size 
as the normal force. Which M? Yeah, which M? Yeah. There you go. I mean, that was complicated, Kenta, but I would argue nothing new there. Just pretty long and step by step by step by step. Yeah, that's going to be the mu, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping desperately I made up good numbers. I'll switch to red for the final. I've scrolled down. Aiden, what was M1? Oh, 5.25? Times 9.8, 10, 42. I mean, the G's cancel, I guess. There is a G on the top and a G on the bottom. So I could cancel out the G's. What was mass 2? 12.3? So it's up to you if you want to leave the 9.8s in or not. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be 5.25 tan 42 divided by 12.3. I'm hoping you get a decent answer somewhere in the 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 range, I hope. What'd you get, Ashley? 0 0.38 what? Four, three sig figs, 0.384? Is that right? Oh, good. 0 0.384. When I used to teach this back when we were linear back when I covered this, I usually got to this right around Christmas. So here is the Christmas card for smart people. Uh, it says M. Hey, what's 2.71828? That's E from your math pre-calc days, base E. Oh, what's another way to write R squared? Okay, RR. And then one over Y to the negative one, that's just plain old Y. Uh, what's the square root of X squared? What's the square root of x squared? Don't overcomplicate it. And what is force divided by acceleration? And then H2O, H2O, H2O. Oh, Arian, if you want to, you can just read that out and we'll, we'll understand. Christmas card for smart people. <laughs> Next page. We're going to finish with this one. Just to give you an idea of some neat applications, rock climbing. So here's someone who's hanging from a harness. They're against a cliff. Maybe they're rappelling. We have to make some assumptions. It says, assume the mountain climber's feet are tending to slip down. So friction is up. They do have to tell me that because it could be that actually the feet were slipping up and friction could be down. You can look at both situations. So friction is going to point up. Uh, right force equation. Well, you know what I'm going to do first? You know what this is a good job for? A free body diagram. So I'm going to represent the mountain climber right here with a dot. Okay, what are the forces acting on this climber? Get the obvious one. Yeah, I totally agree with that. <laughs> Only one mass, so I'm not going to go M1 or M2, just Mg. Um, hmm. Oh. Definitely tension up at an angle. What have I missed? I think I've missed at least two. Because the question mentions one in the preamble. What? Emily, which way? Yeah, and you know what? I don't think it's going to be the same size as gravity. I think tension is canceling out some of gravity. Tension's at an angle, so it's both horizontal and vertical. And in fact, this time components is going to be a good friend. I'll show you why in a second. But definitely is going to be uh, friction pointing up. And then we're missing one more. Your hint is look at part C. Yeah, I think there's a normal force kicking out from the wall. Taya, back to you. How many forces are there? This isn't going to work for a vector triangle or sine lock is there's more than three. And I like three of them. Three of them are in the XY horizontal vertical. You know what? Here, components is going to be a friend. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into tension horizontal, tension vertical. Because I have digital ink, I can erase the T that's inside my triangle 
and do that so it's less confusing. You probably can't do that. So if you want to, you can either erase or scribble it and put it there. Oh, and apparently this angle right here is eight degrees. Color, 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 color. Okay, let's keep going. What does A want me? We haven't even started yet. What does A want me to do? I'm going to actually do kind of a T table in that I'm going to have a horizontal section and I'm going to have a vertical section. Horizontally, can anybody see the equation? I'll give you a hint. It's going to be something equals something. Brandon, what do you think? Make a guess. So you're, I think you're right. What'd you say? Yeah. I'm going to go normal force equals tension X, but yet yeah, or TX equals normal force. In other words, wherever I see a TX, what can I replace it with? Normal force, if I know that. Or you know what? I'll bet you part C where it says find the normal force, I'm going to find tension X. That's my guess. Vertically, everything down has to equal everything. Taya, back to you. What's everything down? What's everything up? Two things. Yeah. Now, after you've done a few of these, you kind of found there was a bit of a science and a bit of an art to these. I already know this is the equation I'm going to keep going with, and I'll convince you of why that is in a second, because on the next line, I could write mu times the normal, mg equals ty plus mu times the normal force. Brandon, I don't know the normal, or do I? What can I replace the normal force with? Ah, okay. So now I can say mg equals ty plus mu tx. What I'm going to do from this picture over here, actually from my little vector triangle up here, I'm going to quickly resketch the triangle part of this. So we have tension y, we have tension x, we have tension Color, 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 color. What I'd like to do is replace TX with an expression with a T. I'd like to replace TY with an expression with a T. I'd like to write tension X and tension Y in terms of the original tension. So let's see. Uh, TX, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? Color, color, color. Kyle, you're in pre-calc this semester. Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? T. Which trig function? In other words, I can replace the Tx with T sine theta. I know theta is 8, but I'll do a g generic one. What can I replace the TY with? Well, Kyle, TY, opposite adjacent or hypotenuse. And T is what I want to get in here, which trig function. I can replace the TY with, sorry, don't put an equal sign, Mr. Duick. T cos. Theta. Unfortunately, here, my stupid y is sine. does not work this time. We had to do the full-on trig. That equals mg. Now, why is that so nice? What's b wanting me to find coming back to you, Taya? How many t's do I have in this equation? How many would I prefer? It would be really neat if there was a math 9 operation that I could pull out of my back pocket and change this from 2 into 1. And there is. I know we're brushing cobwebs off. Ella, this is your moment of glory. If you can look at Taya with pity in your eyes and you can whisper three letters to her, you will be able to... Uh, were you... Uh, yeah, there you go. 
I can write this as m g equals t bracket cos theta plus mu sine theta. Now I'm going to argue, by the way, Taya and all of you, I haven't really done anything new so far. We've done some trig and some components. And I don't know if you would have tumbled onto going through all of this, but in terms of the physics, it's the same old, same old. Uh, how would I get the T by itself, Taya? We're running out of room. Try going straight to your calculator. Let me hit pause for a second. What'd you get for tension? Oh, by the way, they didn't give you the mass of the climber. They gave you the mg of the climber, which actually makes it less typing, right? It's 6, 650 newtons, so it's going to be 650 divided by bracket uh, cos 8 plus... Did they give you mu? They should have in the picture. Yes? Uh, what was mu? 0.65 sine 8. Taya, get the glory. Look over at Ella with pity in your eyes and tell me what the answer is. 601? Units, it's a force. Newtons. Okay. Good. Uh, by the way, this was all part B. That first line was part A. There's my equations. Dean, what's part C want me to do? Oh, that I can do. Uh, the normal force is going to be tension X. What did we replace tension X with? Not mu, because the mu kept dropping down. Tension X was just T sine. Right, right, right? Okay. T sine theta. Oh, do you have tension on your calculator sitting right now? It's a answer button. Sine 8. Bonus. What'd you get? Yep. Kenta, what's D want me to find? Oh, geez. Going to be mu times the normal force. I don't know. Oh, yes, I do. It's sitting on my calculator right now, isn't it? Assuming you've been typing and following along on your calculator. So it's going to be 0. 0.65 times your answer button. What'd you get? 54.4. So this is the idea of translational equilibrium, when all of the forces add to zero. Tomorrow we're going to ask, what if you're also spinning? Rotational equilibrium is when all of the torques add to zero. And if you're not spinning and you're not accelerating, we have what's called static equilibrium. I'm not going to give you any questions from the homework, and I'm going to skip. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. They're cool, but I'm not going to go that far. Uh, instead, I'm going to hit. First of all, hit pause.